of my most important duties as mayor of the city of Pleasanton is to select the people that have stepped up and want to serve on one of our city commissions or committees. I can think of no better way to begin a participation in a meaningful public service. In fact, that's how I began my service to the community on the Parks and Recreation Commission where I spent 10 years and I had the opportunity to chair that commission two different times. After that, I was elected to the city council and served two full terms over an eight year period. And I've been your mayor for the last six years. What a great experience this whole thing has been. It's been one of the greatest experiences of my life. The city council and I want all of our past and current commission and committee members to know how much we value your participation. It's your ideas, your interest, and your commitment that have helped bring the very best to this community and made it the great community that it is today. And to those of you who might apply to serve on a future committee or commission, we welcome you, we encourage you to give it a try. Let's hear from some of the commissioners representing the commissions and find out what they're up to today. Uh, hi, I'm Brad Hoddle. I'm the chairman of the Parks and Recreation Commission. Uh, I've served on the commission for about 10 years now. Uh, we oversee all of, the, all of the parks and recreational programs that we have here in the city of Pleasanton. We've got 44 parks in the city, I believe, now. Um, and uh, yeah, they're beautiful parks. It's just neat to be a part of that process. Uh, that's constantly looking ahead and constantly striving to do a better job at, at what we're doing. So one of the big projects that we worked on this year was the Community Farm Master Plan. So a master plan is just that, it's a master plan, but it's not a final plan. It just kind of gives us the, a, an outline and, and a basic understanding of what this space is going to be. One of the other really interesting projects, and it, it, it had a lot of passion to it as well, was um, a, a pesticide notification program. So we initiated a, a pilot program this year uh, where we picked some of, the, some of the parks that have, and we had staff do some research, where, uh, the parks that have the higher usage, a lot of kids running around, animals, things like that. And we started posting, posting signs, you know, when it was going to be, uh, when we were going to be treating the, the soil with weed kill or, or, uh, or the planting areas, and how long uh, you should stay off of it. Um, and it's been very, very well received. Uh, probably the third big project we worked on this year was a, a trails master plan update. And what that does is we're identifying bike lanes. And one of the important things that we're looking at is, is connecting these trail systems that we have. Hello, my name's Herb Ritter. I'm a past chair of the Pleasanton Planning Commission. Welcome here tonight. Uh, each project's important that comes before the commission. We actually look at the small projects as well as the big projects, and everyone is important. And actually having the residents come and give us community feedback is so critical to, the, to what we do in helping make sure we get the best project possible for the city of Pleasanton. There's three projects that we worked on in 2018 that uh, are notable. One was the Carpenters Training Facility. The proposal to replace an aging building with a new building uh, brought some, not land use issues, but some uh, design issues. And we went back and forth and worked with them to come up with some very, uh, we think will be nice uh, uh, amenity to our community and also will look good along Santa Rita Road there. But another one was the Harrison Street Residential Project. It's a three unit residential development. Uh, it's a great example of a small infill project. We're probably going to see a lot more of those uh, just due to the high density issues and concerns in Pleasanton and around our community. The third part is that we've been working on is a work plan uh, roadmap. We're trying to level up the conversation and get a bigger, a better big picture thinking of what we're doing on the commission as we move forward to help to support the, the residents and what we need in our community and not just do it as every proposal comes in. We want to have some planning and uh, come up with some key components that uh, help us as we update the housing policy um, with all the new state housing legislation and requirements and uh, work on the housing element. My name is Sandra Jellison and currently I chair the Civic Arts Commission for the City of Pleasanton. We've been very busy this year. We had um, 
a major art project working with Kaiser Permanente on developing a mural along with the help of Nancy and Gary Harrington. Um, we had a um, we had we put forward five new project paint boxes. That's our utility box painting program to make them a little bit more artistic and enjoyable. Kaiser Permanente approached us about wanting to put a large mural on one of their buildings here in Pleasanton. The artist happens to be a local man, and it was it, that was very good for us. Uh, we like the idea of keeping our artists working, and it's a, a beautiful mural. It's outside an area where children will be going in and out of, and so it focuses on being healthy and being happy and being a Pleasant resident. We celebrated our second Ignite Festival, and this is a city-sponsored event, and we had over 40 vendors participate, which is certainly up from last year, and we had beautiful weather, which encouraged 3,500 participants to come downtown and enjoy it. What I enjoy most about being on this commission is that I get to give away money. Um, not me personally, although I would like to, but all of us on the commission, we take it very seriously. Um, we like the idea that we can actually foster growth in terms of what goes on in the city regarding the arts, and that it's, it's a good feeling. Um, my name is Eric Cartwright, and I'm chairperson of the uh, Energy and Environment Committee for the City of Pleasanton. The committee has uh, reviewed and provided input on new opportunities for homeowners, property owners within the city to reduce energy usage within their properties. Uh, this includes a, a new online uh, program where uh, folks can go online and review their energy use with, within their home and get uh, recommendations for reducing uh, energy use and at the same time reducing their utility bills. P-A-C-E, I'm going to call it PACE. The PACE program is designed uh, to help homeowners with that initial outlay of funds required to install energy and uh, water efficient fixtures within their home. The committee has also been working with staff on policies for sustainable water supplies for the city. A primary goal of this policy is to improve the reliability and resiliency of the city's water supplies in anticipation of the next drought, whether it's next year or five years down the road. But what I think like about most about the committee and working with the committee is how engaged everyone is on the committee, how, how committed we all are to improving the city of Pleasanton, making it, continuing to make it a, a, a more environmentally sustainable, community, a greener community, and so that's, um, that's just a pleasure for me to be a part of that effort. Hello there, my name is Susan Hayes, and I'm chair of the Human Services Commission for the City of Pleasanton. The commission's role is to advise and make recommendations to the City Council on all matters that impact the human condition. So for the third year, we received over $1 million in requests from service providers throughout the region. It's really important um, out here in the Tri-Valley, there's a misperception that we don't have a lot of the challenges that we have in other parts of Alameda County. The first project that I'll cover is the Human Services Grant Program, which is an annual event for us. The second project that we undertook was the strategic plan update. Our role in human services is, is obviously to make sure that folks are represented and their voice is represented. I'm Tony Sobey. I'm a member of the Housing Commission and uh, this, for this next coming year I was uh, voted in as the uh, chairman of the commission. Uh, the Housing Commission reviews uh, proposals for affordable housing, uh, for various different uh, developments within the city and uh, makes recommendations to the uh, council for their consideration uh, for approval. The largest uh, program and uh, approval uh, was the Sunflower Hill uh, 
Irby Ranch project. Uh, it was the result of um, staff uh, worked with the uh, Alameda County to get almost uh, over $7 million of Measure A1 funding. And uh, we also reviewed funding out of the Low Income Housing Fund for Pleasanton and we did approve $2.2 million of, of funding from that source. So the two together was very important for getting uh, tax credit financing, which was applied for by uh, Sunflower Hill and Saha, which is the uh, managing and development uh, nonprofit organization that's going to actually build and operate the uh, new development for the disabled. Hi, I'm Kate Inman. I go to Amador Valley High School and I'm a member of the Youth Commission. Um, the Youth Commission serves as a liaison between the youth in Pleasanton and the City Council and we work on behalf of our peers. So the Youth Commission um, this past year has been working really hard. Um, every March about that time we get to allocate grant funds to different organizations. This past year we've been able to put on a lot of cool events for the youth in Pleasanton. In March, we were able to do a Youth in Government Day, which we do annually, where students in high school have the opportunity to shadow local officials um, from the school district and the city council um, and city offices. And so they get to skip the day of school, but are really a learning, um, in a learning environment where they get to shadow different people and learn about what local government is really like. Um, and then this spring also, we were able to put on a teen uh, mental health panel for high schoolers to come and listen to a panel of other high school students and a licensed psychologist talk about different ways to manage stress and their experiences. Every October, we're really excited to put on Unity Day for our community. It's a day that focuses on promoting kindness over bullying and inclusion and acceptance. This year we also were able to put on different community forums um, through our community education program. We had over 900 people attend to learn about the different things explored in the forums. I enjoy being on the commission because I get to see my peers excited and motivated to make change in our community um, and eager to do so. My name is Michaela Hurdle and I'm the chair of the library commission. I think the library is one of the best kept secrets in our town. The purpose of the Library Commission is to uh, represent our community members, to, uh, to take the mission of the library into the community, as, as well as uh, promote, of course, education and reading and services. Um, the great thing about the library is that it's, it's no longer just a physical place to get a book. Uh, the library of today really is about digital services. It really is about, um, about community programming. It's about getting out of the building and engaging with community members. The nice thing about the Library Commission is that we focus very strongly on that. So what we're focusing on is bringing the message of all the great things that the library has to offer to the community members where they are and, and really reintroducing the topic because people still think that a library is just a place to come get a book. And um, in today's modern society with uh, you know, digital resources and um, community activities, that's just not the case anymore. The library is so much more. Another thing that the library uh, commission has been working on this year is to review the standing policies and tweak them for updates. Honestly, the reason I wanted to be on the Library Commission, very specifically, was to have a voice in what the Library of the Future would look like. Uh, my name is Brian Bowers. I'm a Park and Rec Commissioner, and I am the Chairman of the Bicycle, Pedestrian, and Trails Subcommittee. But while we worked on the Trails Master Plan, we worked on the Foothill Corridor Plan, and the I-580 overcrossing improvements. In 1993, Pleasanton uh, created their first Trails Master Plan. Uh, that was 25 years ago, so recently we've been in the process of updating that plan. When the Trails Master Plan is completed, it will supplement the Bike and Pedestrian Master Plan. Another project we're working on is the Foothill Road Corridor. 
this is to make bicycle uh, travel more safe uh, along this road. Uh, it's a busy road and we decided to break this project into three sections and really the purpose is trying to create access for all ages and abilities. One of the main goals of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan is to make our uh, streets and roadways as accessible and friendly for people of all ages and abilities. Uh, one of the gaps that we identified is in the I-580 overcrossing area and we are working to identify what those um, issues are and implement a plan to make it uh, more accessible. My name is Christina Nystrom Mantha. I'm the chairperson of the City of Pleasanton's Economic Vitality Committee. A lot of people ask, what does the Economic Vitality Committee do? What we do is we serve in an advisory role to the City Council for any issues that affect the economic health for the City of Pleasanton. This includes working with businesses, this includes working with the school district and other stakeholders in the community. One of the projects that we've advised the City Council on is the Johnson Drive Economic Development Zone. We've advised them on zoning changes, the fiscal and economic analyses, and also the necessary transportation improvements and accompanying financial plan to help make this underutilized section of Pleasanton profitable and vibrant. Another project that we've had a hand in is the Downtown Specific Plan Update Task Force. One of the members of our committee sits on this task force, and that's provided an avenue for us to offer our input on key elements of the plan, including the streetscape and the potential redevelopment of the Civic Center site. This year, the Economic Vitality Committee had several meetings to talk about the update to the city's development impact fees. These fees hadn't been updated for several decades, so as you can imagine, there was a lot to talk about. We were able to provide input and guidance as to the assumptions and methodology being used, as well as insights in retaining Pleasanton's competitive advantage in the regional commercial market. The Economic Vitality Committee believes that businesses of all sizes should be supported here in Pleasanton, and because of that, we have several programs which support local businesses, including the encouragement of Small Business Saturday and partnerships with the Pleasanton Downtown Association, Pleasanton Chamber of Commerce, and Hacienda Business Park. Another organization that the EBC has partnered with is Visit Tri-Valley. Visit Tri-Valley helps to continue to ensure that tourism in our area is active and vibrant. They do this through some programs such as the Tri-Valley Ice Cream Trail, which is delicious, and also the Wine and Dine program. We're pleased to report that hotel and tourism revenues have remained strong in our area. One of the things that's nice about the Economic Vitality Committee is that we have members from many different sectors of the community. We've got a representative from the school district, we've got a representative from the healthcare industry, we've got Visit Tri-Valley, we've got representatives from various real estate sectors of the community. And what I like about that is that it really helps to give us a broad perspective on what's happening in Pleasanton and what can we do to better help the economy in Pleasanton and to better support the city so that the city can provide programs and services that benefit all of us. What I like most about being on the Economic Vitality Committee is that I get to hear different viewpoints from different segments of the local business community and then synthesize them into recommendations that we make to the city council to help ensure that Pleasanton's economy stays healthy and strong. Thank you again for all you have done to serve this city.